commodities such as coal, iron ore, bauxite and limestone need to be sampled and tested, either for contractual reasons or in order to monitor or control processes which use them. There are many types of sample cutters. This one is a cross belt cutter. This type of cutter is not strongly recommended because the material just above the conveyor belt may be completely missed by the cutter or at least undersampled. This particular cutter is quite good for a cross belt cutter. In the worst cases, some cross belt cutters merely dislodge a few particles from the top of the stream. It is best to sample commodities as the material is falling. For a cutter to be unbiased, all particles should have an equal chance of being sampled. There are a number of conditions which must be satisfied for a cutter to be providing unbiased samples. Here we discuss nine such conditions. Condition number one. The cutter must intercept the entire stream of particles. For this cutter, the part of the stream furthest away from the camera appears to miss being sampled. Condition number two. The cutter must move at constant speed through the stream. This cutter moves somewhat irregularly. Condition number three. The cutter blades must be straight and must be sufficiently sharp that particles cannot wander around over the cutter blades as occurs with this cutter. When cutter blades get badly worn, some particles which should have been sampled will not be sampled and vice versa. Condition number four. The cutter opening must be constant. This cutter aperture varies from 52 to 60 millimetres. Condition number five. The cutter must have sufficient capacity to hold the sample being collected, not just on the average, but in all cases. Otherwise, some material which is selected for inclusion in the sample by the cutter blades will end up not being in the sample. This cutter seems to have a slightly inadequate capacity. Some material falls out. Condition number six. There must be no loss of material from the sample or contamination of the sample. There must be no build-up of material on cutter blades, as we see for this cutter, no loss of material from samples collected, and no admission of extraneous material into the samples. Condition number seven. Bridging of material over the cutter opening must be avoided. The usual rule is that the cutter aperture should be at least three times the nominal top size. Certainly the cutter aperture must be at least two times the size of the largest particles. Here the cutter aperture is 80 millimetres and the nominal top size is 30 millimetres. Conventional wisdom would say that the cutter is slightly too narrow. But particles are actually as large as 60 millimetres, so it is not surprising that bridging occurs. Condition number eight. Vertical or near vertical cutter blades must be avoided. Particles which are on the underneath of the stream might hit the cutter blades and bounce backwards slightly, as we see here. Such particles would not be sampled, causing a bias with large particles being undersampled compared to small particles. So far, we have been looking at cutters for which the motion of the cutter is across the stream. There are other types of cutters for sampling falling streams, and the same principles can be applied to them, provided that we are careful. This cutter is a vesin. It moves in a circle, and its opening is a constant angle. In operation, it is similar to a cross stream cutter. The conditions that it must move at constant speed and that it must have a constant aperture need to be interpreted to mean that it must move at constant angular velocity and that its aperture must be a constant angle. The lips of the cutter must be straight lines through the axis of its motion. This is a swing arm cutter. It moves in the vertical plane and must have constant angular velocity, at least while it passes through the stream. This is a ramp cutter. It has cutter blades which are parallel to one another and approximately square to the stream. Again, the cutter must be moved at constant velocity. Condition number nine. 
The final condition for correct sampling is that particles should not ever hit one cutter blade and bounce clear over the other cutter blade. If this does happen, then large and bouncy particles will be undersampled. A team from CSIRO has produced a mathematical model for isolated particles which can be used to check the geometry of particular cutters. This enables conclusions to be made about cutter speeds and cutter apertures. Different materials bounce differently. Here we see that a rather damp material, almost a slurry, doesn't bounce very much. Slurries don't bounce off the cutter blades, but waves can be made by other parts of the cutters. Here we see that larger bounces occur with dry material. For swing arm and ramp cutters, the model predicts different sized bounces for the two possible directions of motion of the cutter. The bounces are larger when the closing speed of the particles relative to the cutter is larger. Correct sampling is easier to achieve if the cutter is sampling only for one direction of travel. Another issue that can be discussed using this sample cutter is that intersecting the entire stream needs to be interpreted as including the bounces sideways off the cutter. A few particles seem to bounce too far to the right here to have a chance of being sampled. Here we see a cross stream cutter which needs to have longer cutter blades in order that the entire stream, including bounces off the cutter blades, be intercepted. The segments of this video were originally filmed at 200 frames per second as part of a research project funded by six Australian companies through Omara. The largest bounce observed from the film taken for that project is shown here. We will show a segment of the film several times so that it is easy to see this particle. It is to the top left of the field of view. The cutter aperture is 300 millimetres and it would appear that the bounce carries the particle at least 400 millimetres square to the stream before it lands on the incoming stream of particles. Most of the cutters which were filmed in the project do allow particles to hit one cutter blade and bounce clear over the other. However, they are near enough to unbiased for practical purposes because very few particles bounce in that way. This cutter is sampling iron ore. The flow rate is 3,500 tonnes per hour, which is almost a tonne a second. The cutter aperture is 300 millimetres and the cutter speed is 350 millimetres per second. The average primary cut takes about 0.86 seconds. Multiplying by the flow rate gives the average mass of a primary cut, 830 kilograms. A single particle of 30 millimetres diameter weighs about 70 grams. As a fraction of a primary cut of 830 kilograms, this is less than one part in 10,000. The iron grade of large particles is about half a percent larger than the average for the entire stream of ore. A single large particle bouncing incorrectly per primary cut would cause a bias of the grade difference times the fraction by which large particles were underrepresented, or 0.404% iron. Several hundred particles per cut could bounce incorrectly before the bias of the cutter became large enough to be important. That is for the characteristic iron percent. For the characteristic percent of oversized particles, a smaller number of particles bouncing incorrectly might be of economic significance. Looking at cutter operation with the naked eye and doing a back of the envelope calculation will often give an adequate indication of whether this source of bias is important. However, for some sampling installations, it may be difficult to find a good viewing position. The net conclusion of our project is that it is the simple aspects of cutter operation which are the most important. Routine maintenance of cutters, adequately powered motors and generously large cutter apertures are all important. You also need to actually look at your cutter in operation, say every few months. The principles again are, the sampler must intercept the entire stream of particles. The cutter must move at constant speed. The cutter blades must be sharp and straight. The cutter opening must be constant. The cutter 
must have sufficient capacity to hold the sample. There should be no loss or contamination of sample. Bridging of material over the cutter opening must be avoided. Do not use vertical or near vertical cutter blades. And finally, particles should not ever hit one cutter blade and bounce clear over the other cutter blade.